And welcome back. WECO is a not-for-profit that is serving the South Bronx communities with education, housing, family support, economic development, as well as the arts. And uh, during the time of COVID-19, businesses and closures and layoffs, hard hit in that area. And the question is, what support is WECO providing during a time like this when things are very challenging? We're pleased to be joined by the Senior Program Manager of WECO, Yasmin Vega, and thank you so much, Yasmin, for joining us. Thank you so much, Darren. Thank you so much for having me again on Open. I've been here a few times, and I'm really sad that I can't actually be here, here. I love the studios. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I mean, listen, I, we do too. And I mean, I love being in the studio and, and having people right next to me, and unfortunately, you're not, but you're virtual, and glad that we could have this conversation and talk a little bit about this. But um, give us a little bit about, you know, everybody's navigating through COVID-19. We're at the place of reopening. Uh, but talk to us about what WEDCO is experiencing uh, right there in the South Bronx community. So WEDCO, as you mentioned, is a nonprofit that works in three different communities here in the South Bronx, uh, High Bridge Concourse, Cortona Park East, and Melrose Morrisania. And listen, we've all been really hard hit and like us as people and communities as well, business owners, and WEDCO, its mission is to support the holistic person and provide support both in housing and entrepreneurship and also counseling and, you know, that holistic support. So we've been able to shift to remote work to continue to be able to provide these services as best as we can. So we continue remotely as much as we can connecting with our community members with um, health care benefits and unemployment benefits, as well as, you know, the small businesses. I, I want to really get into the small businesses because that's who I work a lot with specifically. And, you know, sometimes it's like really hard to imagine. And people are realizing it now that small businesses and these merchants are really the backbone of our neighborhoods and our communities. The it's, backbone of America. I mean, the let's be honest. Of America, that's so true. And there's something so special, especially here in the neighborhood. These businesses have been here forever. You know the merchant. You know you wave as you go by. They know your name, or they know exactly your order every single time, or they spot you a few dollars. And now these businesses are closed, and our neighborhoods are really hurting just like you know just as a sense of community has kind of vanished as it has in many communities in different places um so we've been trying to recreate as best as we can the sense of community online and yeah. connecting with the individuals online and the small business owners who have been hit twice they're hit as individuals as people with rent and homes and families but then also as business owners with rent and expenses and employees and all of that so well, let me let me jump in here and ask the question yeah. because we talk about small businesses, right? I know one of the concerns is the moratorium, right? There's a moratorium that's been placed on rent, mortgages, uh, things of that nature. But talk to us about how businesses are actually coping with that. Uh, I had a conversation with a business owner not too long ago, and they said, you know, now I've got to up my prices because I now have to have PPE in my in in, in my business, and so it's going to affect customers. Have you heard the same thing? Right now, I haven't heard the thing about the price increases right now, but I think it's because a lot of the businesses in the neighborhood around Cortona Park East and the Southern Boulevard area, a lot of them are beauty and personal care businesses. So I think they, they're just reopening and they're still trying to figure out the pricing and they can't have as many customers in at the same time. You know, you can't have the salon or the barbershop packed as you used to. Um, so I think it's going to take a lot of adjusting. And right now, where the honestly, where the business mind has been, has been rent. Businesses just have not been able to pay their rent. And it's just been on good faith negotiating with their landlord. And now that they're reopening, starting to make rent payments, but they're three, four months behind in payment. Um, and right now with the eviction moratorium coming to an end in August, like I think, you know, we're gonna be seeing a lot of businesses that are reopening now, but now come August, you know, I feel like we're going to be seeing a lot of businesses struggling with now eviction on top of them. So that's one of the 
resources that we connect our small businesses with is free legal assistance through volunteer for legal services. Um, helping them in like reviewing their contract or seeing if they have clauses in there about rent payments or eviction or any rent relief. And a lot of these businesses, I've been talking with them, a lot of them are like, you know what? I can't reopen. Like the mm -hmm. they're allowed to reopen now, but just the hurdle for them is insurmountable. Like they're so behind in rent, they're so behind in utilities that they, have, they haven't been able to access these PPP loans. Uh, they either don't qualify. I know a merchant that didn't qualify because they said she didn't have enough credit. Um, or just they're um, looking for different ways, like grants, it would be a great opportunity for the small business as well. You know, if they're small grants, they just need a little bit of working capital and just the documentation, everything they need to apply, not to mention undocumented business owners aren't, allowed, aren't eligible to apply to those federal programs as well. So, you know what, I think we're not even beginning to see how this thing is going to shake out for the business. Right. So it's like they're starting to open their doors. They're like starting to get some customers in, but the moratorium eviction is still on. So like we haven't been able to see that big effect. And I, you know, I understand that landlords are people too. And a lot of them are small landlords and they make their living from rent collections. But, you know, there has to be, and this is me just saying, like, to anyone out there with the higher powers, it seems to be, like, a higher moratorium and relief. But um, I think we're not even starting to see the beginning of it. I think right now the businesses are just like, okay, we can open. Let's try to get people in the door. Let me try to, like, generate some income to see if I can start paying all those three, four months of rent and utilities right. that I have to do. Well, I, I also know, let me, let me ask the question about e-commerce, because a, a lot of businesses had not made the adaptation to go to e-commerce. Some people, di you know, just didn't have it within them. Some people straight away from it didn't know what, didn't have it. Um, are we finding more of your businesses are now adapting to e-commerce? Because as we're in this pandemic, um, it's, it's going to be the way of the future. Absolutely. And actually, we had done a business survey back in December. We finished it up. And a lot of the business is still back in December. They told us they want to move to e-commerce. They want to have a greater online presence for their business. So we were already helping them create this online presence and social media and Facebook and selling online. And then this happened. So what we did as part of the services that we kind of had to regroup and provide is that we provided some free webinars around, you know, best practices to starting your business online or moving your business online, how to create the free website how to take good pictures to make sure that you can connect with your customers and sell your goods. And this is something that we're definitely going to keep at. Businesses are very interested in growing their online presence and selling online, even if it's just posting the pictures and then you like Venmo them, you know, so just like easier ways to sell online. And there is definitely a huge want from the business owners to do this. And unfortunately, also, a lot of these business owners, you know, they've been in business forever and they never really had to rely on e-commerce. They maybe don't even have email addresses that they use. So, you know, it's a it's a step by step process, but that's definitely going to be how we keep pushing our resources and like really concentrating on that and providing one on one technical assistance. Yeah, well, yes, maybe we're going to leave it there. But thank you so much for the great work that you guys are doing in terms of helping businesses. And I know that as we start to reopen these businesses and we start to reopen as a city, um, a lot of places, particularly right here in our borough, are going to be adversely affected. But we're going to be coming back to you uh, so that you can get us, give us an update and uh, let us know how businesses are making out, particularly in the South Bronx. Thank you so much, Darren. I will definitely love to be back. And I hope I'm back with really great news and that we're thriving. And please, just if I can leave one last message is please support your local merchant. Please go to your small businesses. So many of them are immigrant owned, black owned, brown owned. Please go out there and support your local merchant. Yeah, we need our businesses to survive. As we said, small business is the lifeblood, not just of our borough, but of America. Yasmin Vega, Senior Program Manager over at Wetco. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much. All righty. Well, listen, now, if you do want more information on Wetco, we encourage you, please visit their website. Their website is uh, over at W, I should say, Wetco.org. 
Also, if you want to find out more about them on Twitter and Instagram, all you've got to do is go to at Wedco Speaks. So once again, Wedco.org, the website, and Wedco Speaks on Twitter and Instagram. Stay with us. Guess what? We have got more open coming up. We're just going to take a short break. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> 